Today I wanted to make a short video to talk about the experience of someone making a negative or even nasty comment about your voice. This is a really common experience from, especially I hear this from my beginner singers, my hobby singers, people who haven't even gotten the courage up to be able to take singing lessons yet because somebody said something in their childhood. Often it's a parent, perhaps a sibling, Often it's a teacher, even a music teacher, which makes me very angry because the music teacher is doing the opposite of their job, which is to encourage children to experience the joy of music and teach them how to do that. But anyway, that's for another video. Um, so often people have had this experience in their childhood of somebody saying something negative about their voice and it sticks because singing is a part, like your voice is a part of you, singing is vulnerable and we carry that and we, you know, Often people then don't sing for the next 40 years because they've had this negative experience that has damaged their creative and expressive spirit, which breaks my heart. But even people who are trained, people who are professional musicians, all of us have experienced at some point somebody saying something about our voice that we didn't like, that didn't make us feel good. I've had this experience. I've had people's comments about my voice stick with me that have, a, that have changed the way I have approached singing to try to prove them wrong or to try to sing in a different way. Um, I've, from the professional musicians that I work with, I've heard them say, you know, somebody came up to me a gig and said X, Y, Z about my voice. And then I thought about it for the next three years. So we've all had these kind of experiences. <clears throat> I want to talk about how we can analyze and make a judgment of a voice. And there's two aspects to this. And I want you to think about what actually makes a good or a bad singing voice. I don't think there's such a thing as a good or a bad voice. So we can talk about technical proficiency, right? That can apply to any instrument. Either you have the technical ability to do X, Y, Z, or you do not. Now, not having the technical ability does not make someone a bad singer. There are plenty of amazing singers out there with beautiful voices, with unusual voices, who, are, who have a beautiful delivery that is moving, who have become very famous and very rich, who are not technically trained singers, who don't have technical proficiency, who sometimes are off key, who don't sing perfectly. There are so many of them out there. And I think if you think about the music that you love and have a think about it, you might be able to come up with some music that you've heard that you enjoy that's from singers who don't necessarily have a really technically perfect kind of voice. Technical proficiency can also be improved. It takes practice and it also kind of takes knowing what to practice, um, having good guidance on what to practice, a good vocal coach or singing teacher to show you the things to practice that you know will help you improve your technical proficiency. But it's not essential to have technical proficiency to be a good singer <laughs> or to enjoy singing or to have other people enjoy your singing. So that's the first thing, technical proficiency. The second thing I want you to consider is taste because I think a lot more of these kind of comments are made on the basis of taste. Think about the kinds of people who have made these comments. If it was a friend, a parent, family member, school teacher, did these people really have, are they qualified to make a technical analysis of your voice? No even if they're a music teacher, even if the person is a musician, even if the person is a singer or a singing teacher, that does not mean that that person actually knows squat about vocal technique because there's a lot of misinformation out there in the singing world. Before I learnt the anatomy-based, science-based technique that I've been learning for the last 10 years or so, um, I was also spreading misinformation because I was just teaching what I had been taught. So whether that person is qualified to make technical judgments is one thing, but most of these judgments are going to be subjective anyway. So it'll be like, I don't like the sound of the voice. That voice is annoying. Any subjective judgments, any things that are using some variation of good or bad are subjective and they're based on taste. We all have different tastes in music and we all have different tastes in voices and the kind of voices that we like to hear. 
So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the things that people have said about your voice in the past or if this happens to you in the future. Keep in mind that just because one person doesn't like the sound of your voice for whatever reason doesn't mean that that applies to everybody and it doesn't mean that that should apply to you. And remember that you can improve your technical proficiency but you don't have to in order to be a good singer or to enjoy singing or to have other people enjoy your singing. I also want to mention that I have a an unusual voices playlist. If you're watching this on Instagram, the link to my Spotify playlist is in my bio. If you're watching this on Facebook, I'll drop it in the comments below. Think about the kinds of singers that you've heard that you think are really cool that have unusual or weird kind of voices. And remember that taste can also be culture based. So the kinds of voices that are often praised in say white Eurocentric culture might be different to the voices that are praised in other cultures. So keep all that in mind. Let me know in the comments below if you have a musician who you really like who is not technically proficient or trained um, or has an unusual voice. I would love to hear those recommendations and I'll talk to you again soon.